All right, today we begin chapter two, acids and bases. And depending on your chemistry background, a lot of this material might continue to seem like review like it did in chapter one, but you'll notice the rest of the chapter name, Central to Understanding Organic Chemistry. And it really is this understanding of acids and bases. Right? It's critical to understanding the whole course overall. Right? We can really phrase everything in terms of an acid-base reaction if we're using the Lewis definition of acids and bases, right? We'll start in chapter two. We can do it through both semesters, right? And that's important for a strategy for tackling the course, right? You wanna understand conceptual ideas, not memorize exact reactions, because if you understand the chemistry at the foundation, right, you don't have to worry about memorizing hundreds of reactions across the next two semesters. Right, you let those foundations guide you. Right, so this first video is a shorter one. It's just covering 2.1 and 2.2 in our first section. And, and a lot of this material should seem like review from chapter 14 if you had me for general chemistry too. Right, ideas about acids and bases to lay our groundwork and then build on that. We'll have a total of four videos for this chapter. Right, so. We had the original Gen Chem 1 definition, the Arrhenius definition of acids and bases, and then we built on that with the bronsted lowry definition, which is the most common definition of acids and bases. Right? An acid loses a proton, a base gains a proton. It gives us an acid-base reaction, also known as a proton transfer reaction. And that's important because anything with a proton can possibly be an acid, and anything that has a lone pair can possibly be a base. But an acid can't lose a proton unless there's something to accept it. It's not just going to ditch it into space. Even if we're thinking about just putting an acid in water and the acid losing the proton that way, right? water, the solvent, is accepting the proton. So it's got to go somewhere. Key idea, tracking where those protons are going. All right. The only thing that might be new from this first video is in general chemistry, Right. We talked about having seven strong acids. And those seven strong acids, we said, fully dissociate. And that means that they ditch their proton, they don't come back. But in organic, really every reaction is reversible, including our strong acids and bases, depending on how we work with the solvent. So note those two arrow differences there. Right? On the left-hand side, we've got a reversible reaction, meaning that our reactants can go to products and our products can go back to reactants versus an irreversible reaction where our products just go to reactants and don't do anything else. Okay, so we're kind of moving away from that previous definition of strong acids and focusing on a new one where everything we're gonna think about as being reversible. Yeah, which is going to be an important idea in the next video. We also need to recall, if we're talking about reversibility, right? An acid loses a proton to form a conjugate base. A base gains a proton to form a conjugate acid. And in an equilibrium, it's an acid-base reaction in both directions. Our acid and our base on the left-hand side go to our products, conjugate acid and conjugate base, but if it's an equilibrium, those are still combining in an acid-base reaction. Key idea, acid-base reaction in both directions, because we're gonna to start to examine them that way. And notice those different size arrows that we've seen. I'm jumping back a slide here, number four and number five, those weird looking equilibrium arrows. If you haven't seen those before, the longer arrow is pointing toward which size it side is favored. Okay, so here with the longer arrow on the bottom, that means that our reactants are favored. They're going to predominate in solution. And also notice that we've seen water acting as both an acid and a base in these past two slides. We know by now that acids have different strengths. Right? A strong acid means our products are favored at equilibrium, and a weak acid means our reactants are favored at equilibrium. So notice we have a new definition there, right? If we're thinking about acidity as a measure of the tendency for something to lose a proton, 
versus basicity, where we're measuring the affinity for a proton. And so the tendency to lose a proton, right? Strong acids have a tendency to lose a proton, and the conjugate base has a little affinity for protons. And then remember as well from general chemistry, stronger acid means we have a weaker conjugate base. So new definition, I put a star on this slide or in your notes, wherever you're keeping track of things. All right, strong acid, notice the arrow here. Products are favored at equilibrium. Weak acid, the reactants are favored. It's not gonna dissociate very much. And a key thing from this chapter is gonna be predicting how reactions go. Do they favor the products? Do they favor the reactants? Are they strong, are they weak? More to come on that later. We also know how to measure equilibrium constants, right? Plenty of types of those. Ka is the acid dissociation constant, which tells us how much that acid has dissociated, right? It's kind of a measure of how strong the acid is. And we do that by doing products over reactants, okay? For anything, this is just a general KEQ, don't let that water throw you off. Right. Anything that's measured in a molar concentration, we see our Ka down here and a different mathematical expression. It's also our original KEQ multiplied by the concentration of water. This is really what we're worried about right down here on the bottom left, our old way of measuring Ka. Hopefully you still remember that from equilibrium in chapter 12. If you have any questions about where those are coming from mathematically, make sure we talk about it. So let's finish by talking about acid strength and pH. Okay. You should know what pH is, and you should also know what pKa is. Right. P just means negative log. So pKa is negative log of the Ka value, the acid dissociation constant. So if we have something that has a stronger acid, is a stronger acid, that means it's got a higher Ka, right? a higher acid dissociation constant. More of it is dissociating, losing the proton. But because pKa is negative log, the higher the Ka, the lower the pKa. And you need to get used to using pKa because in organic, that's how we talk about acid strength. So the stronger the water, or sorry, the stronger the acid, here we're looking at strength in water, but the lower the pKa. Stronger the acid, the lower the pKa. And there's, here's a general guideline for looking at strengths. Less than one, very strong. Then we've got moderately strong, weak, very weak, extremely weak. We also know pH, of course. pH is looking at the solution. Keeping in mind that H plus is the same thing as H3O plus. Okay, H plus never really exists okay, in a aqueous solvent okay, because it gets solvated, combines with H2O to form H3O plus. And pH is used for solution. PKA we can use for actual compounds, pH is looking at the solution. And again, as something's becoming more acidic, the pH is going down. And this kind of summarizes what I just said verbally, right? pH is looking at the solution, PKA is looking at a compound. And we'll use these ideas from this first video to next look at organic acids and bases, some new groups, and see how structure later can affect the acidity of these things.